Hey, it's Triple J here, and we're getting ready to release BidBuddy version 5.1 this week. We're going to be releasing it on Thursday, April 5th at noon. So we're here to show you some of the new features you can look forward to. And right away, we can hear is the new interface, and you'll probably notice a couple of features already. Uh, one being the search for vehicle button. You've probably noticed the new QCI status uh, image column here. You've also got some new things off to the right here, some lost damage information title information and the last known current bid all coming from the auction website as well. So the search for vehicles is a pretty cool little feature that allows you to search for vehicles that you've bid on in the past. You can search by VIN number, by the uh, auction stock number, the year make model, or even a body style type. You can even access that body style search by right clicking on a vehicle and saying search for bids of that same year make model. So it brings up that same body style for you. So the QCI status column here is to indicate uh, the data available in the apps system. And apps is our biggest part of the 5.1 update. Apps is the auction parts and pricing service. It's a built-in sharing system into the buddy that allows you to share data with your approved buddies. There's three different levels of sharing. You have your parts, your auction parts, which would be every time you save a bid, the parts that were good, the parts that were bad, and the interchange numbers get saved. You have your inventory and you have your standard pricing as well. So every time you run a fresh download of data from your inventory system, your inventory on hand and your pricing information gets uploaded to apps for your buddies to see as well. So I'm going to show you a demonstration of apps here. And you'll notice I have two bid buddies open here. This one here says it's on Dev Server 1, which happens to be my server here in Connecticut. And if I look at the other program open here, this is Dev Server 2. Dev Server 2 is Mike's server in Colorado. And these are both looking at Copart, uh, Hartford, Connecticut, uh, for next week's auction. I both have the 98 Accord highlighted. And if I look at this 98 Accord, we got a 94% QCI score in Mike's server. And if I look at it on my server, I got a 95% QCI score. I can even go into it real quick on my server here in Connecticut. I just want to show you the fact that there's no interchanges selected and there's no part status is selected as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm not going to save the bid. I'm going to go back over to Mike's server. So now we're pretending to be Mike. I'm going to go ahead and bid this 98 Accord. What I want to do is pick out a few of the good parts, bad parts, and interchange numbers and save them and show you how that all works. So we'll say the, the uh, first uh, four, five, six parts here are going to be good. Let's say that the uh, bags were bad and even the hood was bad, the front bumper was bad, we'll say it was hit in the front, we'll even say the fender was bad, the left fender was bad, and we'll leave the deck lid and rear bumper as an assumed good status. Okay, And we're going to go ahead and select out the interchange for the engine here, and we're going to see that the engine has five different options, and the one we're going to pick, we'll pick this last one here just for ha-has. I'll pick out the transmission as well, Automatic, we'll say left front door. We'll say it's the sold out electric one. Left rear door is electric as well. And we'll go ahead and leave it like that. Actually, I am going to do one more thing. I'm going to say this rear bumper. I'm going to say is an exclude. So an exclude is going to be a very important status of version 5.1. Because we're sharing this information, if you say a part is bad, if your buddy goes in to bid that vehicle, it's going to tell them that part was bad and they're not going to be able to calculate a bid for that part. If you say exclude, that means the part is good but you don't want to count it. So it's going to be very important that you're appropriately using exclude and bad when you're sharing this information with another recycler. Otherwise you could be giving them bad information or they could be giving you bad information and not giving you enough value on a car to make to bid the actual car. So I've got some parts selected, I've got interchange selected. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a pre-bid vehicle. This was on Mike's server and when it's saved it automatically saves this information right into the apps database. You notice this icon changed to a gavel. So the individual person would say no data was found in apps yet to improve this QCI score. Essentially saying you're kind of on your own to bid the car. The gavel means there's an actual bid on the car, so it's an exact QCI score. You can see it even changed to an 84. 
So if I go back over to my system here, go back to Dev01, which is my server here in Connecticut, it's still saying it's a 95% car because it uh, hasn't been updated. So I have two options. I can go ahead and go right into the car and the app's data will show up, but I also want to show you how this will also update itself. So I'm actually going to re-download this list of auctions, this list of cars. I'm going to go back over to uh, Copart's website and I'm going to download this Hartford auction for the 10th. I'm going to go ahead and recheck and reevaluate. So in version 5.1, the auction automatically uh, rescores itself every time you run it. So you don't have to worry about uh, deleting it in order to rescore. It will rescore itself from now on, which is an awesome new feature. So we've got the auction updated here. And if we sort, we can, obviously, we can see a new icon here. So now we have a person with the power of apps behind it, the power of the web behind it saying this QCI score has been improved by data found uh, from my app's buddies. You also notice that the QCI score changed as well from the 87. It was a 95, now it's an 87. And if I go ahead into that vehicle, we can see right away that we've got selected interchange choices, we've got good parts selected, we've got bad parts selected. And we'll even notice that that rear bumper that I said exclude on Mike's server now says good on mine because it was a good part, I just didn't want to count it on my server. So that's a quick little overview of some of the biggest features we have going in, in, in uh, BidBuddy version 5.1. We are launching it on Thursday, April 5th at noontime. You can just run your update downloader very simply to obtain the update. We will have several more videos showing up in the next couple of weeks to show you uh, what's, been, what's going on with the bid. And I do want to show you real quick, uh, vehicles on bid, that same search feature is built in right here as well. So you can kind of see those uh, prior bids that you've made. And I didn't show you as well, if I could actually go into uh, the detail of a, of a choice here. We have apps inventory to show data. We have our apps pricing. So all that information is now showing in there as well. So it's a great little thing for you. Uh, one big note to mention though is that with the version 5.1 release, uh, computer-based licensing restrictions are re-enabled in BidBuddy 5.1. So uh, your main PC that has the SQL database should automatically license itself without an issue. If you have secondary workstations connecting to that main workstation, they will be locked out. It will require a very quick phone call or uh, connect up in BombGar to our support staff and they can reactivate those remote sessions, those remote uh, workstations. It only takes a few seconds, it just have to hit one button to authorize the invalid access attempt, but it's for enhanced security. So again, if you have multiple workstations, please update all of your workstations during business hours so that we can make sure we can license any of those PCs that need to be licensed on your account. We don't want you getting up early and getting locked out. And our new support hours do start on Friday, we will start uh, every morning at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday, as opposed to 8 a.m. And we also will have someone on call on Saturdays now from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you have any questions, please don't uh, hesitate to give us a call, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you, and we can't wait to hear your feedback about all the new features in BidBuddy version 5.1. And hopefully we'll see you at the URG conference next weekend. We've got two sessions dedicated to this to show you all the new features and how to take advantage of them. Thank you.